to hang out. We carried them all around there. And then when we took them to the cemetery, we buried them ourselves to make sure nobody would do nothing. And like, that was the last we saw them. In the old days, it was nice because at that time we just like, we didn't care about anything about what was happening or we just didn't look at the future, you know, we just, for now, you know, it was everything now and never for tomorrow. Okay, I'm Lorraine, I'm Blackie's wife. I've been with Blackie for five years. When I first met Blackie, he was in the skulls, he was dirty, he was mean, he had all the traits that come with being a gang leader. And uh, I had a hard time, but we made it. Uh, he went to jail a lot, and uh, he went and he did 13 months. I was pregnant for my first son. He came home, we spoke, we got together, and he started working, he became a great guy. He's very considerate of me now and the kids, and he helps me a lot. He lost his job, and he's real anxious to get a job now, which at uh, five years ago, I mean, it took me a few years before I, I even put it through his head, before I even suggested for him to get a job. But uh, he's okay now, and I don't regret anything. Before I would say, uh, I don't care about this, you know? I don't care about no responsibilities, you know? But she gave me that challenge, you know? She was, yeah, she was always there on my case, you know? She would say, you do this wrong. I said, I don't care, you know? But it came to a time that I was always going to jail so much, man, that I said, man, you know, maybe what she got, maybe there's something to it, you know? And I gave it some thought, and it worked out because that challenge she gave me, you know, I overcame. I was in a gang in the, in the 40s and, and, and uh, early 50s, but uh, uh, that was all part of our neighborhood uh, where I came out from uh, in Greenwich Village. And, uh, and we would go into empty buildings and get lead and, and, uh, and sell it, uh, empty bottles. It was a very uh, simple, positive activity. We weren't fighting. There was one big war when we were I remember this because I was only around eight years old and my older brothers were involved in this where one block was warring against another block. And it was just a matter of, of territorial rights. But uh, I remember even the, the, the peace meeting when everybody came together and they sat around and they played cards and shut crap together in the streets. And these things uh, developed eventually uh, uh, positively because our families were stable. Our mothers and fathers were there. They were out working, and this was probably where we found our salvation in the streets. But after six o'clock when they were home, they kind of controlled us. The wildest kids got controlled. Well, most of the people that are trying to help me out that know me for a lot of times in the street, like Father Gigani, see me a lot of times in the street. So you say, well, this guy looks like he wants to clean up his act. Let me give him a break. The break worked out pretty good, but it's kind of still screwed up out here. Too many changes. It's like a new life. Like, I was always with the club since I was young, you know? And I was always used to running up and down, getting what I want what I, by taking it. But now you gotta hustle for it, you know? That's a big change. Hey, it's something else. Comanche's been straight for almost a year, too. He's gotten into construction. He's getting paid good money. He almost slipped back in about six months ago. They were really on his case. And he started to hang out with him again. But uh, he went right back to work on Monday. Held down his show. He's doing fairly well. You see this tattoo right here? I had it here. Yeah. You know, it'll be coming off soon. That's what the club made me think. Born loser. Once born left, one percent of society left out. Now, that I really didn't give a hell about nobody in the streets, but my people consider ourselves a family, because uh turn around and you hang out there in the streets and everybody just want to turn around and screw you. At that time, it was real tight, you know? They were fucked over each other, took care of each other real good. Why are you taking that off? Because it ain't right. I wasn't born to lose. Y'all think I got money? Huh? I'm out of everything. Y'all want what I got? Here. It's all the money I got. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you take that. We have we get ready for a block party. I've been preparing for about three days, on and off. 
and I'm looking for about 300 people and um, trying to get my ribs ready now because ribs is the first thing to be done, you know. I don't go back to school because school is more important. This is Frankie D saying, hang in there, baby. Be sweet. If I had to do an old seven man with shooting an old cop, I'd do it. Nice, nice talk, Al. Oh. I gotta remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, Warren. It wouldn't be seven years. Long. You wouldn't do life. You do Your that. life would end right on the scene, man. Today, I don't think you'd shoot out of town. You can hold it. You can't take it anymore, Al. People say, people say, man, you know, I'm scared of dying, man. What's life? Huh? Thank you.